Welcome back. I hope you found the workshop enjoyable and useful. And I hope that we've given you not only theoretical information, but also practical ideas that you can actually use and actually motivate your learners with. Um, reading has changed. People no longer just read short stories or literary or academic texts. People in the real world read all types of different things and we need to replicate this. The Common European Framework sets use of language in four domains personal, public, educational and occupational. It's very important that we as teachers and that we as testers provide learners with practice in these domains. I said in the introduction that I would point you in the direction of reference works where you can get more information. Well, I hope that we've done that. But don't forget that if you go to the handbook, which you can find um, at the City and Girls website, if you look in the handbook, you can see the topics and task types that learners will be assessed on. So I hope that will give you support. I hope also that um, the support materials. Don't forget there are international ESOL and spoken ESOL books at all levels. These will also give you plenty of ideas for developing reading skills. The role that reading plays in the assessment is fairly straightforward. Reading is equally important with listening and writing. In international ESOL, candidates need to reach a minimum score in each of those skills. Sometimes it's difficult with the reading. With listening, candidates are taken along in real time. The recording is played, candidates perform the tasks. But with reading, um, sometimes candidates do get stuck. They do try and understand every word. They can use a dictionary, but they do need to use the dictionary judiciously, not to try and understand every word. And that sometimes is where the teacher needs to come in. Reading can also be a very complex skill. Reading isn't just sitting looking passively at a page. Reading is reading for reference, as we've seen. It's looking at how a text is built up. It's reading, as we know it these days, skimming for general information, for gist, and scanning for specific detail. Very different types of reading sub-skill, which we encourage and promote, and which we hope you, as teachers, will also promote. Um, we also see that reading shouldn't be seen in isolation. Before learners read and after learners read, they can do something. They can anticipate what they're going to read, and once they've read it successfully, they can use this as a springboard for speaking activities or for writing. This gives the whole process of learning an integrated feeling. Motivation, as we've seen, is a very very important part of teaching and we do need to motivate learners to read, to motivate them in different ways. Um, increasingly the motivation needs to be intrinsic to the learning environment. It sometimes seems to us uh, as, as teachers that reading in class is a waste of time. Reading is something that learners could do at home in their own time. It's not. If we approach reading in a positive way, reading can be a valuable part of a lesson. I'm not saying spend the whole lesson with a reading text, but reading can follow on from an activate where learners use spoken language. Reading can then be a central study part of the lesson, and reading can lead to further speaking or writing. <clears throat> if you want more ideas, please visit the website because we are constantly, constantly putting these up. Reading is part of a whole learning process and I hope that this workshop is just one part of a wider learning process. Don't forget that we have workshops also on listening and on writing. Don't forget also that we have workshops on speaking skills, on communication, accuracy, range, pronunciation and fluency. Don't forget we also have the overview to the whole of the City and Guilds International ESOL and Spoken ESOL tests. So if you found this workshop interesting and useful, then I very much hope that you'll find the others useful. And may I wish you all the best in your teaching and in your preparation of candidates for the International ESOL. 
and perhaps spoken ESOL exams as well. Thank you very much and um, goodbye for now.